what's up guys tito here and basically in this video i just kind of want to give you guys some positives and some negatives about all three mobile operating systems because you know what they're all great in in their way but they also have their problems in their own way so um shocking right so anyways let's dive right in let's jump in let's start off with ios okay now the good positive thing about iOS and iPhones is the fact that since Apple only really creates just one, uh, one or two hardwares for its iOS, which is the iPhone, and since lately they've had the iPhone and the iPhone Plus series, um, and also the iPad. The beneficial thing about iOS is the fact that it, it's, going, it's going to have Apple's attention. There's not a lot of hardware floating out there that they have to really uh, try and uh, accommodate for. So, with that being said, having, you know, like one or two uh, main hardwares per year means that Apple is able to support backdated hardware. Which is why, you know, if you're someone that wants to have a device for sure remain up to date, then iOS is the way to go with an iPhone. Because you could have something that's three years old and it'll still get the latest operating system update without a shadow of a doubt. That's always a good thing, remaining updated on your hardware. Now, the downside to iOS is the fact that it is pretty restricted to the things you can do. From what I've gathered from a lot of friends of mine that do own and use an iPhone, um, a lot of things has to be handled through iTunes, which makes absolutely no sense why Apple has not wanted to change up the name of, of your hub. And I'm sorry for the yeah, for that notification. But anyway, they don't want to change up the names for the hub because iTunes is not it's not all about music anymore. It does so much more applications, movies, and other services, etc. So I always thought that they could have called it the App Store in in honoring Apple, right? Taking the first three letters of the name. It's called the App Store. But anyways, uh, that is a downside to it. It's very restrictive and it, it doesn't have a lot of development. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, in-house Apple, de you know, Apple devs are not developing for it, but you don't have a lot of outsourced, third-party, uh, think-outside-the-box users working on iOS, really. I mean, there are some out there. Obviously, you know, they find ways to jailbreak an iPhone. And so... You don't have a mass amount of community. So let's kind of move into Windows now. Windows Phone. What is so great about Windows Phone? What is the positive about Windows Phone? The fact that the operating system runs cleanly smooth even if you have a piece of hardware that only has 512 megabytes of RAM. The phone flies and glides slick. I mean, that's one thing that I really enjoy about Windows Phone. And then the other fact to that is, is that the live tiles is pretty neat. I mean, it's a concept, completely different. Live tiles, get information in the tile on your home screen. And while some made this like the home screen of a Windows Phone because it's all piled up in like rectangles and, and squares, and it looks like, you know, a kindergartner is trying to stack a Tower of Babylon. The whole thing about it is that it, it works and it's and it's clean in that sense. Uh, there's not a lot of cluster and clutter. You know what's on your on your home page, your live tiles. You get info right from it. You want to get to your app drawer, swipe to the right. List of applications you have downloaded. The negative side to all this is the fact that there is no app development for Windows. None. And that a lot of main uh, social media sources are not even trying to develop for Windows. Like there still is no Snapchat. There is no official YouTube for Windows phones, okay? They barely just got an official Instagram. For the longest time, Instagram was in beta. And so that was just like, wow, come on, guys. The only way you would get access to these things is through third-party developers. Actually, I'll call them fourth-party developers because they're not trustworthy. You don't know that if you sign into your social media service, if that app is actually grabbing your login info so that they may obtain access to your social media. So untrustworthy fourth party developers really killing it for Windows. So let's go with Android now. <laughs> Android. 
What are the positives of Android? Well, it's a very powerful operating system, not to say that, it, that it's taking away from iOS, but it is very powerful in what you can do with it, and it's very open in you know, what you can do with it. You can customize it as long as you build hardware, you can customize it and build it out to your liking. Um, that is always something great because there are people out there that just don't want to all have the same thing. They kind of want to stand different. And with Android, you can do that. Uh, besides the fact that you can stand different, the, the operating system has come a long way from being this very laggy, very unorthodox, very misguided direction operating system to now having a clear vision of what it needs to be and has caught up in many ways to iOS and even has surpassed iOS in many ways because let's not BS anybody but Apple has adopted a few things that Android had implemented in its system so that is the positives of Android now the negative things of Android is the fact that it is so fragmented beyond anything else that you're just left in shock and horror you could be walking down the street and know for a fact that that person that has an Android phone across the street compared to your Android device is probably not running the same version of Android. It is so fragmented. Um, and that's just because there are too many manufacturers out there making too much hardware. And neither one of these companies are finding it beneficial nowadays to actually update the hardware. And so they would, well not update the hardware, but update the software, excuse me. So they would rather, uh, you know, build new hardware with the updated software. And so Android is just a flooded community of just senseless, non-needed new hardware. Every three to four months, there's always something coming out, and it's always supposed to be like something better than the last. Rather than upgrading, you know, hardware that can support the latest software, they rather go that way. So in the Android community, everything is just overly flooded. Um, and that does not necessarily mean that more people are using your phone. That just, wow, what do you say? My bad. That just necessarily means that, yeah, we have, say, like a little pool that is no longer filled with water. And the uh, wind is blowing. You guys can see it right on the camera. You guys can see it. <laughs> but yeah, it just means that the pool is completely flooded with Android devices. So. I just wanted to kind of put that out there, you know, one positive, one negative thing about each operating system. And I would love to know your guys' thoughts and opinions of one positive and one negative thing about each of the operating systems. And if you guys would love to share your thoughts and opinions, the comment section below is where you can do so. Um, links up on the display, click them, um, subscribe, click that bell option to know when I'm uploading a video. My name is Tito. This is Aloha Android. And as always, mahalo for checking me out. Aloha till the next time. Love you guys.